Well, praise the Lord, wisdom, members, and friends. I thank you for joining us here online for our virtual Bible study tonight. This is the day that the Lord has made, so we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Right where you are, would you just put your hands together or even online, put some hand claps in the chat and let's just begin to give God the glory just for who he is, just for a few seconds. Just thank him. Thank you, God, for being everything that we need. Thank you for being Jehovah Jireh. Thank you for being our provider. Thank you for being all that we need. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so excited to share with you guys on tonight. I want to thank our pastors, Dr. Mac L. McCullough and co-pastor Frida McCullough for this amazing opportunity to share with you in Bible study. Uh, some of you may be surprised to see me. I'm surprised to be up here myself. Uh, the pastor asked me to do this, and I said, I, are you sure? You might have the wrong person. I think you asked the wrong person, Pastor. Um, but Pastor Mac asked me to come tonight and uh, talk a little bit about worship. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to dive into the Word and talk a little bit about worship. Before the, we do that, would you go to God in prayer with me? Most gracious and heavenly Father, we just say thank you. We thank you right now just for who you are, for continuing to keep us from danger seen and unseen. And we pray even on tonight, Lord, that as we go and delve into the word that you would have your way. Father, I pray that you would uh, enlighten us on tonight and let us learn new things. Show us the things that you want us to know, Lord God. And as we learn about praise and worship, we pray that you would get the glory and we pray that we would grow closer and closer to you in our praise, in our worship, in our relationship with you. This is our prayer and our heart's desire. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Tonight, I want to talk to you guys um, just a little bit about uh, the truce of praise and worship. Uh, yeah, that's what we're going to call it. The truce of praise and and worship. So when we think about praise and when we think about worship, a lot of times people think about, uh, oh, that's what happens at the beginning of our worship service. That's what, you know, we start off with a praise. A praise is a fast song and then we slow it down and we get to worship. Those are some of the biggest misconceptions that we have uh, about church when it uh, concerns praise and worship. So I just want to share with you guys tonight, do a little teaching uh, and help you get to know a little bit more about what praise and worship is. I like to use this definition uh, for praise and worship. I like to say that praise is the vehicle and worship is the destination. I'll say it just one more time. Praise is the vehicle uh -huh, and worship is the destination. And if that's the, if that's the case, I oftentimes like to tell people, you got to get out of the vehicle and get to where God is. We're going to get there. We're going to praise, but we got to get out of that vehicle and get to where God is. There's too many times that we give the impression that worship uh, is about us and our needs, about our music, what style we like, what sound we like. But in reality, it's not about us. It's all about God. And sometimes our preoccupations with music and what we like, it gets in the way uh, and it leads us to our own what you can call spiritual barrenness because we get blocked and caught up on what the music is supposed to sound like or how we're supposed to feel when we come into the church we're like i hope the praise team is hyped today i hope they they get us going but no nah, that praise and worship is supposed to be all to god i like to use this example sometimes imagine uh you were going out with your friends and they had um you know just you and a couple friends supposed to go out get something to eat you guys go get to the room when you get there uh to the restaurant you got a whole party full of people there and they're there to celebrate you. You're like, oh, man, this is amazing. And so they start singing and everybody starts singing uh, happy birthday to you. When they start singing happy birthday to you at the end of the song, nobody pays you any attention. And then people go on their own ways and they have their own kind of conversations off to the side. And you may try to kind of get in that, but it's not about you anymore. And that's what happens sometimes in churches on Sunday morning, week after week. We are supposed to be celebrating God and giving him praise, honor, glory, reverence. And we sing the songs. And after the song is over, we totally ignore him. And imagine if we're singing that song. When the people are singing to you, they're singing happy birthday. Imagine when they sung to you, nobody looked at you. 
Imagine if they were, you know, high-fiving each other, singing happy birthday, and they're all caught up in what's going on around them. And be like, hold on, man, I thought it was my birthday. It's supposed to be about me. And that is literally in praise and worship. Sometimes we do that in church. We don't make it about God, but we make it about us. But praise and worship is all about God. And I want to share this with you. Um, in order to worship God, you don't need a circumstance. All you need is to see God. I'll say it again. In order to worship God, you don't need any circumstances. All you need to see God. Because you know what happens? Sometimes we don't see God right until we see something that's wrong. I don't want to stay there too long, but sometimes we don't see God until we see something that's wrong. Let me get into the truths of praise and worship as we get ready to go into it. Y'all ready to go with me? We're going to get into the uh, truths. I'm going to share four truths about praise and worship. All right. The first truth, if you have your notes, I want you to come come with me. The first thing is praise gives us access to God. Say it one more time. Praise gives us access to God. In Psalm 100, it tells us a familiar scripture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Right. Now, this verse is talking about Moses' tabernacle in the wilderness, and that tabernacle was divided into uh, three parts, the outer court, the inner court, and the holies of holies. And the holies of holies is where God dwelled, right? So our praise is what is commanding us to give God the glory. And as we praise and we worship, we enter in into the holies of holies. And now here's one thing I like to say. A lot of people always say, you know what, when I praise and when I worship, it don't take all that for me. I don't, I don't, I don't have to do that. But I don't know too many people that go to the ball games or that go to uh, their children's chorus or band concerts and stuff like that, and they don't give them no praise. I've never been, if, if my son, even if they in a, in a play or something like that, and they say, give it up for Jay's son who played Bush number five. They didn't even have a main role. He was the Bush on the side. When they, when they call my son's name, what? that's it. That's my boy, right? That's what I'm doing. When they call your child's name, it don't matter what it is. You're going to give them all the praise. And that's the way that we ought to do. To, that's what we ought to do with God when we worship. We got to give him the glory because it gives us access to him. When I praise, I can make God show up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Bible tells us that he inhabits the praises of his people. So that means where I praise, that's where God is. Yeah. Where I begin to give him glory and thanks, that's where he shows up. I dare you right now, wherever you are, to make God show up. Even if you're at your car, in your car or on your job, tell, tell the people that they've been bothering you all day, say, don't mess with me right now. Don't mess with me because I'll mess around and make God show up in this place. I'll make God show up right here with a hallelujah. I'll make him show up with a thank you, Jesus, because you got access to God when you pray. Somebody type, I got access to God. That's it. That's number one. I've got access to God. Praise gives us access to God. Number two, y'all go with me. Praise changes you, right? Praise will change your relationship. It can change your heart. It can change your mindset, your mindset. And uh, uh, praise, it, it shifts our focus from us to the Lord. It's from the problem to the solution, from pain to promise, from hurt to hope. That's what praise can do for praise absolutely changes us. I tell people all the time, you can't have an attitude and praise at the same time. You can't sit there and be mad and praise God at the same time. I dare you to try it, but you can't do it. Praise will change exactly how you are, how you're feeling, your state right there. There's a scripture that I want to share with you in Psalm uh, 20. I think it's Proverbs, not Psalm. Proverbs 27 uh, and 21. Proverbs 20, 27, 21, it says, As the finding point for silver and the furnace for gold, so is a man to his praise. Let me tell you a little bit about that. There is, if you guys know anything about different trades and stuff like that, one of the trades I like is the silversmith. Now, Going to school in Virginia, um, I would go through Williamsburg all the time, and they had a trade shop there, and uh, there was a silversmith there, and I'd like to go there and stop and watch. And I couldn't help but notice 
uh, how they were doing the silvers in those shops. And one time I watched the tradesman and he poured the melted silver into the molds, right? But I noticed the silver before the fire touched it. Before the fire hit it, the silver was jagged and rugged. It was hard. And, you know, it just had its form just rough like that. I'm going somewhere. Stay with me. Now, once the fire began to work and melting away the jagged and rough pieces, the silver became pliable and it was real, real smooth. And you could almost see yourself in that silver. It was almost like looking in a mirror, right? Only then was that silver able to be molded. Now, listen to this. In the fires of praise, yeah, God reaches out and melts down our jagged edges until we become smooth and pliable in his hands. And it's then and only then can we begin to be molded into his image. It's like God is making us so smooth and clear that when others look at us and when we look at ourselves, we see a, re a mirror reflecting back to God. Now, I want you to ask yourself, what does God see? What do people see when they look at you right now? Is it a reflection of him? That's what it should be. If it's not a reflection of him, you should ask the Lord, Lord, I need you to refine me. Lord, I need you to change my heart. I need you to come. I need you to purify me. Put me in the fire, Lord. But I need to praise so I can be changed. Put it in right now. I dare you to put it. I need to be refined. Somebody put that in the chat right now. And some of you may be having a hard time thinking about that or, or actually doing that because oftentimes we have what I call a worship box in church. What's a worship box? Your worship box is you think this is exactly how it's supposed to go. This is worship is they're going to turn the lights down a little bit. I'm going to raise my hands just this much and I'm going to softly sing unto the Lord. But that's not uh, that's not uh, how God has called us to be. God has created us all differently in the way that I praise and the way that I worship may not be the way that you do it. But guess what? It's not silent. We sing that song all the time, don't we? And I will not be silent. I will always worship you. But we sit down in the sanctuary during praise and worship and look like this. And not singing those songs. We're silent. We're saying that we don't want to be, but we are. So this is my thing. I want to tell you, this is a sidebar. This is not, it's not even in the notes. I want to tell you, it does take all that. Look. Acts chapter three, verses one through eight. I want to go there. Let me pull that up real quick. Uh, it says one day Peter and John were going up to the temple and at the time of prayer at three in the afternoon. Now, a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver or gold, I do not have. But what I do have, I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up. And instantly, the Bible says the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts walking and jumping and praising God. Some would say walking and leaping and praising God. Now, here's the thing. The lame man was only expecting money, right, from Peter and John. But God sends Peter and John, and he receives healing. Oh, my goodness. Too many times we box God in and say, this is all I need you to do. God, all I need you to do is just give me a little bit, little bit, show up just in a little way and I'll be grateful. God, that's all I need. But look, the God that we serve is so good that he blesses us beyond what we can even ask. You need to tell somebody, get out of your box. <laughs> get out of your worship box because God is trying to do a new thing. He's trying to open up windows for you and make it overflow where you are. And you got the window cracked. God is saying, hey, I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to open up the windows, but you ain't you ain't even asking for a small thing. God wants us to think bigger. Why? Because our praise, I said, number two, praise changes you. Amen. Get out of that worship box. 
Let me keep on moving. I don't got much time. Let's go to go go to my next point. Number three, praise is a relationship, not a ritual. Praise is a relationship and not a ritual. Psalms 81 and 10, it tells us, it, it says, I am the Lord, your God. I'm going to stop right there. It says, I am the Lord, your God. That's good news to me because that means God saying that, hey, I'm yours, you're mine. I belong to him. You know how the scripture tells us that we are uh, uh, adopted into, into, um, into the family of God? I used to think of adoption as a bad thing, right? But now when I think about it, uh, you don't get to choose your family. Some of y'all got some family members that you cannot stand. The Lord's still working on you, working on that relationship. But some of you got some friends and some co-workers that may be more family uh, than your blood family is. But God says that he has adopted us into his family. And so when we are adopted into the family of God, that means God chose you. <laughs> he chose to deal with you. He chose to go through rough times with you. He chose to go through those, those uh, situations where you feel like you can't make it. God has chosen you. If you are here, if you are watching and listening, that means God chose you. You've been adopted into that family of God. He has a relationship that he wants to have with you. I am the Lord, your God. That's what he's telling us. He is our God. Say, that's my God. Amen. Listen, I love this. In Exodus 25 and 8, God tells Moses to go build a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. He didn't say go build me the biggest cathedral and, you know, the biggest church with all the shiny brass on the outside. He just said, build me something that I may dwell among them because God wants to be right here in the presence, in the midst of his people. God wants to be right among you. And when we praise, we establish that relationship with the Lord. When we begin to worship, we establish that relationship with the Lord. Some of us are lost because um, we don't have any relationship with God. Some of us have gotten, gotten saved and we're just, we're, we haven't done anything. We haven't moved along. We've stayed in the same place. Let me explain what I'm saying. God is the one who establishes us, right? Jesus comes along and he cleanses us and he saves us. And the Holy Spirit then comes and advances us. So some of us, we get saved and now we're sitting. Ah, some of us get saved and we have been the same. We got religion, but we don't have relationship. And God is saying, hey, I need you to, to walk into spirit. I need you to walk in truth. The Bible tells us that he's looking for worshipers that will worship him in spirit and in truth. So when we walk in the truth, we have that relationship with the Lord. So are you saved and sitting on today? God said, I don't want no sitting saints. I want my people advancing. When we praise, that establishes the relationship that I have with the Lord. When I worship, it strengthens my relationship. When I praise and worship, those things that I'm dealing with and uh, struggles and uh, situations begin to rise to the top of my heart. And when it rises to the top of my heart, it's easy for me to just give it to God because I got relationship with him now. That praise is what pulls out those things. Why? Because when I'm praising, especially to music, listen, as I'm praising and worshiping uh, to music, now I'm reciting the word of God. I'm reminding myself of the truths and the promises that he said in the word. And now as I, as I have it to music, music is the only thing I tell people that can get into your spirit without your permission. So music has access to you. So that music, music has the power to drive demons out. Y'all remember when Saul played before the king, he drove that spirit out. It has that kind of power. So when we sing the truths of the word, we are able to drive out spirits, all that, that things that are unclean in our heart, they're able to drive it out and begin to press forward to what God has for us, to the truths that he has for us. Amen. Praise is relationship. It's not a ritual. So we don't do it out of, oh, I, this is what I do when I come to church. It's time for me to lift my hands. Nah, this is, this is what I do. My worship is a lifestyle. This is every day. I'm not worshiping just because it's, it's 9 a.m. on Sunday and Jay and the praise team are about to sing a couple songs. Nah, 
My worship is now what I do each and every day. I give glory to God because of who he is to me. Amen. I got to keep on going. This is the this is the last one. I'm going to get out of here. Last one. This is this one makes me shout, y'all. OK, praise defeats the enemy. I need somebody to go ahead and type that real quick for me. Praise defeats the enemy. The first mention of praise in the Bible is at the birth of Jacob's son, Judah. That's in Genesis 29. Right. And Judah means praise no matter where you see it in the Bible. It means praise. Now, we see that in Genesis. If you go all the way to the end of the Bible, Revelation, Revelation 5 and 5, it tells us that our Lord Jesus, the lion of the tribe of Judah, has overcome. <laughs> it says the lion of the tribe of who? Judah has overcome. And here's the thing. So many of us walk around in fear of the enemy. Whether it's the devil you fear or your own thoughts or your next door neighbor or situations that you got going on. We walk into fear and we're fearing the enemy and we're fearing of what could happen to us. But God already says, listen, I have overcome. That's why I don't I don't I don't get up there and give no praise to the devil and say, look what the devil doing. He's doing this. Nah, he ain't got that power. He's not omnipresent. He's not omniscient. He don't have that type of power. So I don't worry about what the enemy is doing. Why? Because it says that he walks around as a roaring lion. It didn't say that he was. The scripture told us in Revelation 5 and 5 that the lion of the tribe of Judah has overcome. The lion. It didn't say the one as a lion. He said he is the lion as a tribe of Judah. So when the enemy comes and he's making all that noise, he's as a lion, but he might be a little puppy. You got to kick him out. Now, listen, only people who are not praising and worshiping are the ones who are worried about their enemies walking around as a lion. Because, look, if I got a little dog in front of me, I'm not going to be scared of the dog. But if the lion come around, we all running up out of here. But I'm not going to be scared of no dog coming out. Some of y'all now, some of y'all might be saying, I don't know, Jay, depending on what type of dog it is. I might be scared. <laughs> but I'm not I'm not going to fear a dog over the lion. And that's what I'm calling the enemy tonight. The dog. <laughs> he ain't nothing but a dog. Listen, praisers know that the lion of the tribe of Judah is the real thing. And he's already overcome every single enemy that comes into their path. The Bible tells us that we overcome by the blood of the lamb. Yeah. And the word of our testimony. So that means I got to open my mouth and say something. And when I say something, I'm giving the glory to God. I'm praising him. I'm God, I thank you for what you did. God, I give you glory. When you're not talking, I got a question about it. When I don't hear people, you know, testifying or praising, I said, maybe you're still stuck in it. Maybe you're not out yet. But if I know I have overcome, overcomers, we make noise. Matter of fact, all my overcomers, come on, make, make some noise with me right now. Somebody just shout, say, I'm an overcomer. I've already overcome by the blood of the lamb. Amen. You are an overcomer. And so I want to remind you guys that as we praise, we have power. <laughs> as we praise, we will have access to God. As we praise, as we worship, it will change our hearts. It will change our minds, our thoughts. As we praise and as we worship, we establish that relationship with God. And when we have that relationship, finally, when we praise and worship the Lord, we are able to defeat the enemy. So would you right now, before we get out of here, would you right now, I dare you for just the next 30 seconds, would you begin to open up your mouth and just praise and worship the Lord? There's some enemies in somebody's life that needs to be defeated. There's something that you're facing and you got the power to change your situation right now. If you would just begin to open up your mouth and start praising and worshiping the Lord. I'm believing God with you right now that as you praise that your enemies are being defeated that as you praise walls are coming down that as you praise your situation is already turning around that god is already working it out in your favor as you praise newness is coming upon you i believe it for you right now would you just come on somebody all over the social networks just begin to give god the glory in this place begin to magnify him yeah yeah god we love you god we make you great god we thank you for being our overcomer we thank you for being the line of the tribe
tribe of Judah. We thank you, Lord God, that we've got access to you right now. We thank you right now, Lord. We thank you that as we praise and as we worship, it is acting like a key that is unlocking the door of our unanswered prayers. Lord, we thank you right now that you're already making ways in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Yeah, yeah, we thank you, Lord God, for that. Hallelujah, hallelujah to the Lamb. Listen, I thank you for joining us here tonight. And I just want to say uh, again, thank you to Dr. Mack and Co-Pastor Frida for this wonderful opportunity. I pray that tonight that you remember the truths of praise and worship. And as we continue to celebrate and as we get ready for uh, our virtual Sunday, this, this Sunday coming up, that you would uh, join us in that. And even where you are at home, that you're going to open up your mouth, that you're going to lift your hands and that you won't be ashamed. But you'll, you'll praise and remembering that you got access to the Lord, remembering that you are already overcome. You're an overcomer because God, the Lion of Judah has overcome. Before we get out of here, I just want to remind you guys that uh, we do have a couple ways to give. If you've been blessed or if you just want to sow into this ministry, uh, they're bringing it up on the screen right now. There are multiple ways to give. We thank you. It's your generosity that continues to allow us to do ministry here from your giving. It allows us to be able to uh, have great events for our children, for our next generation, and continue to do ministry the way that God intends for us to do it. So if you don't mind at this moment, would you just uh, let the Lord touch and speak to you, touch your heart, and sow a seed into this ministry tonight? We're going to close in prayer and get out of here. Father, we thank you for this time that we've shared with you. We thank you for allowing us uh, to learn about praise and worship. We're grateful that we know we have access to you. And as we access you, Lord God, you begin to, to, to change us, Lord God, to clean up the things that are not of you, Father. And we build a better relationship with you. And we know that we continue to walk in victory because you have already overcome this world. So we thank you for it. We give your name the glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, Wisdom. Amen. I pray that tonight's virtual Bible study blessed you as much as it blessed me. I'm so grateful for the wonderful word we receive here at Word and Season Ministries every week. If you would like to partner with us tonight, if the word blessed you and you want to partner with us tonight in your giving, you can do so uh, as they have put the information on the screen uh, and our various ways of giving. Uh, we're so grateful that you spent some time with us tonight and that you are finding it in your hearts to sow into this ministry. We look forward to seeing you on Sunday and pray God's blessings over your family. Join us on Sunday at 9 a.m. in person, or you can follow us on our multiple social media platforms and our website. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. All of those places you can find wonderful things about Word and Season. I pray God continues to bless you and your family in a tremendous way. Again, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Remember, for every season, there is a word in season. And don't forget, C3 Living, caring, community, connection. God bless.